looking at this table, I have a lot of stuff on here. Part of kokanee fishing and the success of kokanee fishing really is uh, tenfold when you start building your own lures. And creativity is endless with the availability of everything that Max has. We So many different options in colors of these uh, smile blades, the point, uh, eight size smile blades in a variety of colors, reflective color contrast, um, different uh, color patterns. Um, it's just, it's endless. And your imagination and how you uh, put these together in combination with a number of different bead options in building your lures, this is where the uh, I don't want to call it the complexity, but the opportunity for you to be creative in building your kokanee lures. Okay, so here is a number of kokanee lures that I built the last few days. I have uh, silvers and black, gold and black. I have orange and glow. I have uh, pink UV and glow. All these have UV. All of these have different levels of UV and glow capabilities. And we tie those in on hooks that are also uh, uh, tied in with strands of UV, glow, flash, and uh, attractability. And so for me, a lot of these lures, including uh, even this series here that have the uh, little micro squid over the top of my flash and my crystal flash and my UV strands and all that. I have these small uh, little LP squids that I've pulled over the top, which again, more UV, more color contrast. These black ones have always worked fantastic uh, as, a, as a body pulled over the uh, flash and the crystal flash and the, and the UV. Uh, gold little blades, um, work fantastic for some reason gold is a color that you have to have in your arsenal when going after kokanee do not discount the ability of gold whether it's in your dodgers or your spinner blades uh true silver works fantastic nickel okay there's varying degrees and when this stuff works pink yes always orange yes always always have pinks and oranges in your arsenal and gold in combinations of those as a starting point you're going to find uh, some success for sure there's a lot of things to consider when building kokanee lures but for me it starts uh, with the hooks okay and there's uh, really no better creature out there than these uh, these drop shot hooks um, <clears throat> by gamagatsu and size one uh, typically size one will get it done all day long for me I also like to couple a single setback size one drop shot with an owner size two uh, mosquito hook only because this has a flat nice flat shank that I tie all my um, attractability to and then that trailer hook is the drop shot now for me one thing I've discovered over the years and you know it, it varies for a lot of you guys out there there's far better kokanee fishermen than me out there day in and day out I guarantee it but for me finding success I stick with what I have found to uh, be advantageous over the years and Oftentimes, I will tie my hooks uh, with quite a bit more spacing than you're going to find in your manufactured lures. I typically go almost two finger lengths, always at least a finger length and a half separation between my hooks. It looks like a long distance, but it's truly not. And how do we get there? First of all, uh, one thing to understand is um, I build the hooks and I attach the flash and all the uh, components of the flash and all that to the hook separately and then I tie the leader on afterwards and we'll add the beads and those types of things. So what does that look like? How do we build um, a, uh, a kokanee lure from that perspective? So starting off, I tie my hooks on braid. Believe it or not, this is 30 pound braid that I use to secure the hooks. And what I've done here is I've tied basically, it's a, just basically like a mooching rig on a couple of drop shot hooks. One thing we want to do is we want to make sure we pull that completely out of there and can't find my scissors. Okay, well, can't find the scissors. Don't know what happened. Anyway, I'm going to cut that strand off of there. So when it's done, okay, I've tied that mooching rig. I have separation on my hooks. I've used braid. Don't worry about the fact that it's green braid. It doesn't matter. 
there's so much uh, other stuff going on with the flash and everything else that um, a little bit of a little strand of green braid isn't going to hurt nothing. Guys have asked me, can you use yellow? Uh, hi Viz, I suppose you could because again we have so much other stuff going on with flash and color and um, UV and all those things. I really don't think a little strand of any color in there is going to make a difference. But for me, uh, durability and the ability for these hooks to perform time and time again as they're in and out of multiple fish mouths day in and day out and not tied on mono, that is a durable presentation of hooks that's not going to wear out. So basically once I cut that extra off of there I have two hooks with decent spacing and I can begin to build my lure. So I put the top hook into my fly vise. I wrap some of my high vis pink UV thread around it and basically now it's up to me what I want to add. And typically I have a number of options, but there's four main components that I use I learned from Mr. Herzog years ago. We have flash, we have UV, we have glow, and we have, uh, we have you know, uh, more options in, in flash and, and whatnot. I, you know, it's uh, endless really when you walk into a fly shop and you look on the wall and start thinking about what should I put into my lure and take a... Uh, Take a light in there with you and truly see what is UV, what glows, what reflects, what colors are coming off of these under a UV light. So you can truly understand what color combinations you're putting on to your lures. And it's very, very simple. I have a whole bunch of material here that these, this amount of material has lasted me literally for years because I'm really only putting on four or five strands of each individual product at any given time. I don't want to build this thing up so big that it's just uh, gaudy and you know just way too big. I start off with a small lure presentation and that's the end product that I want to get. I basically cut and wrap in multiple layers, you know, four or five strands at a time to build this thing up. And I'm going to continue to wrap that until that head on there is pink and everything is tied down and secured. Then I basically have this portion of my lure built. Now one thing I will do is I'll take my Loon uh, UV clear finish, fly finish, and I basically wipe that around that top end thread. Now this is activated, believe it or not, by UV light. For those of you that don't fly fish or make lures, this hardens after five or ten seconds under UV light. If I left it sitting here in the garage after I painted it, it wouldn't harden. But I hit it with this UV light, ten seconds or so it's rock hard. It's fantastic because it sets it up and seals everything, holds your knots in check, it doesn't come unraveled, it lasts forever. So pick up a little bit of a finisher. You can use other cements and things like that, but this is odorless. It uh, does a real nice job encasing it and holds everything in check. I really like the way that that ends up. So basically you create that little piece of uh, uh, presentation there. It's just a set of standalone hooks with your flash, your UV, the pink head on there, and your hook is open so that now with any clinch knot I can tie on my leader. So let's talk about leader lengths, okay? I have a number of different options on the table here. I have some some larger hoochie bodies, some squids, uh, you know 1.5 hoochies with flash in them. I have this little LP squid. I have basically a version of uh, back in the day Herzog's Rastical with a smile blade and a few beads. If you look at all these lures I've created, they're basically kind of uh, different versions of the rascal. Different bead combinations, different uh, UV contrast and glow combinations, different color presentations with the blades uh, in the beads. These gold and black and chrome or silver and black with UV blades and or just gold because on some days when it's high sun and the fish might be hanging a little bit shallower, uh, too much flash and UV might push them off. But if I put some, some gold and some black contrast, and don't be afraid to use black for kokanee, that contrast at times seems to really stimulate them to follow your presentation. So as I uh, complete this particular little rig here, all I do then is tie on that stretch of leader. Now let's talk a little bit about leader. You guys may think I'm crazy, but for me, at least 12 plant, 12 pound fluorocarbon is what I go to. Again, I'm trying to create a lure that I can use time and time again. Uh, as once stated by a world, round, or a world renowned philosopher, uh, Mr. Herzog, it doesn't matter how big the elephant is in the room if you can't see it, right? So 
12 pound fluorocarbon on these small uh, uh, lures is not overkill. One thing you got to remember is we're trying to impart a lot of action on these smaller lures because that small blade going back and forth spinning around doesn't create a lot of wiggle on it but a 10 to 12 inch leader behind a uh, dodger okay with fluorocarbon that is typically uh, quite a bit stiffer than just standard monofilament you're going to impart even more action on your lure because of the stiffness of your fluorocarbon some guys will even run it up to 15 pound test i'm not saying that's wrong uh, i just happen to have a nice spool of 12 pound that i've relied on for a few years and it works great there's nothing wrong with running 15 definitely will we'll run 15 when i go after some of those larger kokanee on the east side and or even for sockeye okay so you basically take that hook presentation with your flash and whatnot already secured and now you're just tying a simple clinch knot to the top of that now you have a piece of leader on there and all you have to do is stack your beads on okay stack your beads on put a small bead on top to make sure your smile blade is going to spin on top of that thing uh, cut it to length and tie on your barrel swivel put it on your uh, put it on your lure tray and you're good to go quick change out because you got a barrel swivel on there okay um, we bait these up with corn or berkeley gulp maggots and next week when i get into rod selection reels line counters and how to bait and scent uh, your lures we'll delve into that a little deeper but for right now just know that building the lure is kind of a multi-part option by simply putting the strands on tying on your leader and stacking your beads on and truly when it comes to repetition you want to make sure your leader lengths are all similar in length you don't want to be fishing stuff just randomly and trying to figure out what they want if you have a board of all leaders that are 13 inches you're in the ballpark if you have another board that they might be 9 to 10 inches you're in the ballpark that gives you options to see engage truly what their responsiveness is to either shorter leaders with much more whip and action on your lure or a little bit longer leader that's going to have a little slower cadence as it follows behind your dodger and again it's mixing and matching low profile beaded lures like these at times when they seem to be off the bite and or don't want a big presentation other times you may have to go with these larger hoochie bodies you may end up putting on a larger spinner blade okay this combination right here uh, again these are all tied on mono so it's not always 100% uh, of the time that we do a braided line uh, rig but when I'm putting all that flash and everything on there I want that to last so some of these are just quick easy to make uh, simple tube fly and a hoochie down over your uh, hooks and a single bead and a spinner blade uh, on the top of that that'll get it done all day long it seems like a little bit big of a lure but for kokanee it doesn't matter a lot of times they will chase this stuff uh, we don't know why uh, again they're not talking to us but the reaction of them biting this stuff will tell you whether or not you're uh, successful in your presentation again this has a larger spinner blade on it i could get away with a little bit longer leader on this one because it's imparting its own uh, vibration uh, color and uh, and uh, uh, re uh, attractability that it's putting out there uh, spinning glows another great choice so this one here has a spinning glow on top of that hoochie skirt with some flash in there that one will work in most cases where they're chasing pink a spinning glow sometimes spinning in line versus a spinner blade creating a lot of disturbance will get it done so you know again it's just based on your imagination small gold blades uh, silver plate uh, multi colors of UV uh, single colors of UV with contrast and or some glow any and all of these on any given day will work in front of either hoochies small beaded lures lots of flash lots of UV don't be afraid to use glow there's a lot of different combinations you can do there's a lot of different sizes of hoochies you can utilize one of the easiest ones to do is uh, even with this silver hoard this small uh, squid on here this uh, particular rig it looks big but simply by taking that small hill, uh, silver hoard presentation just as it's made slide it on top of your hooks put a single bead on in a smile blade in certain cases that thing will catch kokanee and trout all day long okay so mix and match make them different sizes have small bead presentations up to larger hoochie skirts bigger spinner blades down to real small 0.8 uh, smile blades 
move it around. Get some small pen tech, gold blades, silver plate. Never can have enough of gold silver. That's kind of it. You know, that's the, uh, that's the beauty of this is you can mix and match colors, UVs, contrast, glow. Um, it all works. It all works, and uh, it's just a matter of you putting in time and experimenting.